Ok. Buenas tardes. Eh, vamos a dar una pequeña introducción para responder a sus preguntas, pero es importante, me voy a referir. A, otra vez, las reglas son que quien me pregunte en español, respondo en español. And who asks me in English, I will answer in English. So those are the rules. Spanish with Spanish and read English with English. Ok, pero voy a hablar en español al principio. Tengo un comunicado para su propia... Eh, I have a communique for ease of reference of what I'm going to read. It is uh, available in English and Spanish. And it's a summary of what happened today and then some comments, some short comments. I want to provide sufficient time for your questions. We informed the international community that the constitutional government of President Nicolas Maduro, with the support of every state democratic institution and Venezuela society in general, has defeated a new attempt by foreign powers to provoke confusion and disorder in the national territory. In the early hours of the day, a group of deputies from the National Assembly and a small group of low rank military personnel placed themselves on a bridge in the eastern part of Caracas and made a call for a military insurrection that was ignored by the forces of public order including by the initial group itself of military personnel st stationed there, who have since declared they were tricked by one of their superior officers. This media operation for destabilization has relied on the immediate complicity from abroad of the president of Colombia, the president of Argentina, the president of Brazil, the president of Chile, the president of Panama, the President of Paraguay, the U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, the White House National Security Advisor John Bolton, U.S. Senator Mark Rubio, the President of the European Parliament, and even the Secretary General of the OAS, who today was going to convene a meeting on Venezuela, knowing what would happen all of whom in an interventionist and criminal manner made public calls for the Venezuelan military forces to disobey their legitimate commanders and thereby promote national chaos. The constitutional government of President Nicolas Maduro acted rapidly, isolating the focal point of public disorder with maximum attention to the safeguarding of the human rights. There has been no wounded thus far and the fundamental freedoms of the Venezuelan people, preventing the innocent majority who have the right to live in democracy and in peace from being affected. In this way, President Nicolas Maduro showed once again that his government is the fundamental and only guarantor of peace and legitimate constitutional order in Venezuela. This new attempt by foreign powers to spark a civil war open the doors to a military intervention from abroad and impose a puppet government in our country failed. It, ha it has, the main reason for this is that it has become evident that this plan has no roots in Venezuelan society. The absolute majority of our people want to live in peace and with the full exercise of their sovereignty, independence and right to self-determination. Following the isolation of the aforementioned focal point of earlier today, the country is in total normality throughout the national territory. President Nicolas Maduro has taken the necessary measures to guarantee the security and the right of peace of our people. The institutions of public order and of the application of justice will be in charge of ensuring that the rule of law prevails in this situation that attempted through violent means to alter the national tranquility. We call upon the international community to reject this violent attempt promoted by foreign powers to destroy the constitutional order in Venezuela. And we alert that this new modality of open intervention in the domestic affairs of coup d'etats flagrantly violates the purposes and principles enshrined in the UN Charter and the norms of international law, while also putting at risk the peace and security of the region. The international community should express a firm position in defense of the self-determination of people, national sovereignty, and the right to peace of all nations. 
that's what we haven't written, which we will share shortly. But my comments will be very short. You see, earlier this morning, there was a very dangerous incident that was supported by the U.S. government totally. They knew what would happen to the point that Mr. Bolton said earlier this morning, or actually minutes ago, he said that the coup failed, but there was much more important people involved, that he, and he knew what would come up. He, wasn't, he, he didn't become aware of this by the news because he already knew what was happening. And he says that the coup failed. This demonstrates that the U.S. government, as in Chile in the 70s or in the Dominican Republic, which in Sunday is the anniversary of the invention, or as in any other country of Latin America, consider Venezuela part of its property and through war they want to destabilize using domestic agents as representatives of the U.S. in Venezuela. It was a dumb attempt, but very serious, very grave, because they do not have the best support of the majority of the people or of those who control the order and security. What it demonstrated is that that puppet government who, who, who is planning to come here to the UN is just an arm of the US in Venezuela. It is shame. It is a shame. The, the government of, of President Nicolas Maduro has defeated all attempts to create a, a civil war in Venezuela, all attempts to create chaos to open the door for a military foreign operation in Venezuela. We demonstrated that the great, the large majority of people want peace, and these minority groups on the side of the rule of law, the only oxygen they have to survive and act in a criminal manner is the support of the U.S. government who, without any, any sort of shame, recognized that it uh, participated in the conspiration. What we're doing here is to demonstrate how puppet governments, artificial governments, fiction governments, it's, it has been demonstrated that they govern nothing in Venezuela. It cannot be pretended that they be recognized around the government as something. They're just an instrument for the pillage of the country to promote war as in Iraq or Libya or Syria. And in Venezuela, this psychopath elite, warmongering, full of hatred, are using all means uh, of information, diplomatic means, economic means, and now military means, those four means, information, war of information, this morning at 6 a.m., you would have thought that there were 60 generals in the coup, whole teams of militaries, that President Maduro was, was in jail at, at a barrack. There was a bombardment of fake news in just one, two to three hours, and all that disappeared as vapor. It was fantasy. It disappeared because it was a propaganda apparatus for creating violence. The same with diplomacy. The Lima group came yesterday to meet with the Secretary General and they told him that they support war in Venezuela, against Venezuela openly. One of the leaders of the coup, Mr. Leopoldo Lopez, apparently requested asylum in the Chilean embassy in Caracas, who also supports the coup in Venezuela. And there are also other criminals who are hidden in that embassy. 25 lower ranking officials who, who participated in the conspiration today, they are seeking asylum and now are in the embassy of Brazil and Mr. Bolsonaro is giving them asylum. All this I'm explaining is for you to see how they are abusing of the diplomatic immunities and privileges to create a war in Venezuela. We have defeated them. The Venezuelan people has, has reached a victory and it is the government of President Nicolas Maduro but the majority of the people of Venezuela and the Venezuelan constitution who truly ensures and guarantee peace for Venezuelans and for the region. Here at the UN, those uh, people have been defeated. It, is, it would be very hardly that someone here at the UN recognize someone as criminal as them as a serious and responsible government to be seated at the UN. So that defeat will have consequences in other areas of this puppet government to create a chaos and do the pillage against Venezuela. Questions?
Muchas gracias, embajador. Muchas gracias por su presentación. Footage of people protesters being hit by armored vehicles. Um, you said no one's been wounded, but we've seen footage of that. We've also seen, heard reports from doctors that people are being treated from, for injuries from rubber bullets. Um, what can you tell us about that? And has the Maduro government committed not to use live am ammunition against protesters? Brilliant. Thank you very much. The only live ammunition which has been used is the live ammunition against an army colonel who was shot in the neck by one protester exactly in the same place. The only live ammunition, rubber bullets are no live ammunition, I'm sorry, I'm sorry to say. They are used in, 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 quarter, in crowd control and there are no lethal weapons. Actual, the only actual lethal weapon that was used this morning was against an army colonel who was protecting the army barracks in that place. And uh, as far as the uh, truck, is the, uh, which has been repeating 10,000 times in the last two hours, the only incident that may have been an accident and is the only incident that, incident that you want, or no, you know, you personally not, the media want to show as an example of the uh, excesses in repression of our government. But let me tell you something. There was an attempt of a violent coup d'etat calling for an insurrection of armed forces. They were using uh, machine guns and high caliber weapons in that attempt. And uh, the potential of that uh, reckless attempt to create havoc and massive destruction in Venezuela was enormous. And it was the restraint of our government in which is used to, used to this kind of um, uh, street protest, which we can say that we were actually very fortunate to come out of it with as little uh, damage as possible. I mean, we are proud, I am personally proud, that something as dangerous as happened this morning uh, has finished with almost, we almost know, we know uh, lives to, uh, casualties to lament. No? Ambassador, you're talking about an isolated event about the, the armor car. Can you tell us about the plan of action that uh, you are planning in Venezuela about the commanders of the regions in Venezuela. Can you tell us what's the message? Because you're telling us that this has concluded, but the images are that people are still in, uh, in the streets. We can see Leopoldo Lopez. These people are re remain in the streets. Thank you very much for your question. If you leave today in Venezuela, you would be receiving a message, a text message, an SMS from Mr. Guaido saying, at this very moment, everyone to the streets, everyone to Miraflores, everyone to Topel Maduro. But where's Mr. Guaido? He's hidden in his office. Can you, can you see that? He's asking the people to go to the streets. They're looking for a bloodshed to see if there is a commotion event that can be used in the media. It's an important point that must be highlighted. As it always happens, big part of, of the people on the streets, they are a, a, they're throwing Molotov cocktails, trying to, to cause damage a, and, and to create, yeah, to create damage against people. But now the military part has concluded and it's, it's coming to an end. The multitudes who were, uh, the, Mr. Mr. Lopez is, is seeking asylum at the embassy of Chile. I'm so sorry, but he's hidden in the Chilean embassy, according to the very latest news that I have just received 10 minutes ago. So that story about a great commotion in Venezuela do, no longer exists. It was like a bubble. It was a media operation. It's not rooted or based on the Venezuelan society. Let me tell you something. Mr. Leopoldo Lopez called today for a military uprising. It's the very same person who in 2002 called for the military insurrection. It is the very same Leopoldo Lopez who called for military insurrection for the last 19 years. For 19 years, he has been doing this. We know who they are. We know what they do. There's no responsible military in Venezuela who can consider him as a leader of anything but only the United States. In Washington, they are celebrating. 
By the way, the defensors of our embassy in Washington are being harassed by aggressive uh, multitudes in D.C. I send them uh, my regards. Microphone. Do you are, are you meeting with the non-aligned movement or with this group on the defense of the UN Charter to denounce this new attempt of coup d'etat in Venezuela? Right now, the coordinating bureau uh, 15 meters away is just meeting. And as soon as I finish here, I will go to the non-aligned movement to make the public denunciation of what happened and seek from the from the, the from these countries who share the same principles to support and express their solidarity with Venezuela to all those who share the same principles sovereignty self determination what happened earlier this morning uh, luckily didn't have any effect on the streets but it criminal potential is enormous it is a manufactured act it is the typical military coup of the US fabricated for Latin America is it's a classic but it failed and it failed because it doesn't have a popular roots thing because mm -hmm. you're saying on one hand mm -hmm. this was just a propaganda exercise mm -hmm. and on the other you say it was extremely dangerous and could Absolutely. have lost lots of lives so could you explain Absolutely. what seems to be a discrepancy there? no there is no discrepancy and, 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 and the sec second, second part of my question do you now believe that president maduro is safe in power will he be in power in a couple of hours time in a day's time in a month's time in a year's oh, time thank you very much indeed for the question there is no contradiction whatsoever just i said i said that the potential of that action was criminally enormous, but the actual truth was nothing. And the paradox is the following, as they had no root in our country and in our society, they attempted the, to ignite a civil war, calling for any military insurrection, but as no one believes uh, in them, they achieved nothing. So the potential, the criminal intent was enormous, but the actual reality was nothing. So there is no contradiction, it's a paradox. And the second point is, our President Maduro safe the next 30 minutes, half an hour, two hours? Well, let me say, if these people, is that that they showed this morning is all they got, we are safe for the next 20 years. I mean, they have nothing. The only thing they have, which is dangerous, is the American government. That's really something to count on. I mean, we are not afraid of our people. We are afraid or not afraid. We are cautious and vigilant on this superpower let loose around the world wrecking havoc. And they try to do the same in Venezuela. Thank you, Ambassador on behalf of Anka. First of all, I would like uh, to kindly remind that usually per tradition of this room, the first question goes uh, to Anka. Thank you. I'm sorry, and, sorry, uh, my name is Valeria Robeco from ANSA Newswire. Uh, my question is on the last word of uh, U.S. National Security Advisor John Bolton. Is, uh, is just said that uh, has called out Venezuela's defense minister, head of Supreme Court, and... Uh, head of presidential guard, and uh, he says that they, they agreed that, that President Maturo has to go. What's your reaction on that? Thank you. Again, propaganda. Listen, this is President Trump, by the way, the self-proclaimed president of the whole world, and also says, the actual self-proclaimed president of Venezuela, Mr. Trump. He's saying that he's very concerned about freedom in Venezuela. Mr. Pence also has just tweeted, saying that they won't uh, let go the fight for freedom, freedom-loving people of Venezuela who are taken to the streets today, and we are with you. I mean, these are the actual leaders. Non-Venezuelan people can believe that these are the liberators of anything, you see? And uh, the problem is that they are trying to mix uh, people up by confusion and with this kind of info, info where, information warfare, where they now say that the top officials in our country were involved in the coup and they failed to act uh, at the last minute. But the fact is that uh, uh, these very same people they are accusing, they also are sanctioned and they are threatening with jail and threatening to send them to Guantanamo. By the way, these people are so 
gangster-like. It's the only thing I can think of. This is a, it was published today. It's a new declaration by the Department of Treasury from the, you know, the American government when they say that anyone who joins the attempted coup this morning and if sanctions or is under sanctions, they will be free uh, from sanctions as soon as they join the coup. You see how they use as bait sanctions. This is a criminal uh, use of sanctions. This is no sanction for freedom. These are sanctions for coup and violence. And these, they treat Venezuelan's uh, officers as they treat mafiosi here in New York. And this is the wrong way to treat Venezuelans because they don't believe something as, as simple as this. We love our country. We are proud of being Venezuela and we need to be treated in a respectful way. They don't understand that thing. Yes, please. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, thank you. Um, what's going to happen to Mr. Guaido? Is he going to be uh, arrested? Uh, will he be criminally charged in some way? And if not, why not? Uh, you described him as the leader of an attempted coup. There is a cry in Venezuelan society for the man to be jailed, but I am not the president of Venezuela, I know the general attorney. The general attorney this morning said that he will act firmly. I can predict what he is going to do. Uh, that's why I cannot also, I can't either uh, explain the military plans, that, that's the first question was uh, asked uh, here before. Uh, I'm not the military planner or and the top military um, brass, but what I mean is that it's obvious that the man committed a crime. Sedition, for everyone to see. It's sedition, it's a crime, it's even a treason. The man is acting on behalf of a foreign power. In the United States or in any serious country, that man should be sent to prison. But let our state machinery and judiciary act. I cannot speak on behalf, on their behalf. Yes, please. Thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador. In case that the public order situation in the coming hours uh, worsens and there are additional clashes in the streets, what kind of a scenarios are you planning for in case the situation continues to be complicated? Although you're saying that peace and tranquility prevails in the country. Can you say that peace really won? Yes, I can tell that peace won. You see, for the last 20 years, we have been fighting this, the very same people talking about the very same things. One hour ago, I was explaining that uh, to a journalist that in Rio de Janeiro in Brazil, Brazilians, they dance samba and they built a sambodrum, a place for dancing samba. In Venezuela, they have their protest, their place for protest. The only place they have is that area next to the barracks of La Carlota. That's filled with cameras and everyone knows that. Everyone who passes around, you can see their faces and you know where they hide the gasoline for the Molotov cocktails. It's the, their place for protest. That's why our, our, our security forces are restrained because they, knew, they know where everything is. That's the only place where uh, international media go because they see the people throwing Molotov cocktails there. But as far as they do it there, everyone does, no one cares because everyone knows that this is used for that purpose. The trouble is with, with fake news because people start thinking that the situation is bigger than it actually is, but it deinflated. And those people are not leaders even at their very own home. The internal situation is under control. There's not a super plan ongoing. Ambassador, you have denounced that there are fake news, but how can you explain to people that while you say that everything is controlled and has been surpassed, the images are that people remain on the streets and also today, the United Nations asked uh, both parties to restrain to avoid violence. And, th and the image going around the world is the armed car. Media are terrible. Uh, you, you saw people with, arm, uh, with guns, people calling for military insurrection, throwing military cocktails. But the only image that you show is the armored car. That's the information warfare. 
do you think that the man driving the the armored car it's a it's an assassin it could have been an accident i was not there i cannot provide the explanation for what he did but the first the first thing that you come is that he was there for for uh, uh paid by president maduro the images that you have seen are about the same place and I can assure you that are the very same images from two years ago, from five years ago, for, for, from 10 years ago. It is the very same spot that the opposition uses to do their protests or demonstrations. It is their favorite one. That's why they are allowed to do it there. That, 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 so they can steam their, their energies there. The idea of chaos that they want to depict why don't they say that the armed forces in their 99.999% except 20 soldiers that are now seeking asylum at the Brazilian embassy, they are being very pacific and they have not used one single bullet and that control was due to political uh, condition, not to repression. There are cocktails, uh, cocktail, Molotov cocktails thrown out, but that's by the opposition. But we have been very careful to avoid that commotion excuse that would perhaps allow the Americans uh, to claim that so-called right to intervene ag against the rock states. This is a sophisticated game. The U.S. put traps and they think we have to, to, to jump into their traps. So they have the excuse to act. We are acting with intelligence. We will win this politically. With all due respect, do you think this, this is all the media's fault? No, 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 I'm not saying that. But if you concentrate in just one single event, in the event of the armed car, about as, as if it was the event of the day, and you didn't understand that there was a coup d'etat, if you're telling me that the event of the day and last night you will summarize it, what happened today is that one guy uh, ran over over someone else, then you lose perspective. And I don't think that you are the entire pers the entire media. There's a whole lot of the media. Sachs, a uh, recent report says collective punishment, the case of Venezuela. And I quote, American sanctions are deliberately aiming to wreck Venezuela's economy and thereby lead to regime change. It's a fruitless, heartless, illegal, and failed policy causing grave harm to the Venezuelan people, which is essentially supporting what the prime minister said last week. And uh, Kevin Zeese, the attorney Kevin Zeese, had said that the theft of what $30 billion of um, Venezuelan money by the U.S. and the U.K. is modern-day piracy, and he advised that you sue in an international court. Have you considered doing that? And as a follow-up, do you expect that the U.S. will take more um, actions through the United Nations to try and weaken your uh, government's presence here? Thank you very much. Let me say something in Spanish, which I'm going to repeat in English as well, about the Secretary General question. There was a question here before in Spanish about the Secretary General. La pregunta fue, el Secretario General llamó a la restricción de ambas partes. Mire, yo tengo un problema con esa decisión del Secretario General o su vocero. Momento, él no puede ser eh, imparcial cuando hay un gobierno reconocido en las Naciones Unidas, que es nuestro gobierno, aceptado por los cientos accepted by the by the member states and their credentials being accepted last year there was an attempt to overthrow it then the sg or someone else come right now to say that the parties must behave come on it's a legitimate government so the idea is the secretary general has the duty to to maintain the stability of our country and the only government in Venezuela. I cannot declare that he, accept that he declares himself as neutral in Venezuela. No, his spokesperson said this morning that uh, he was very concerned about the situation and he declared his job was not to support one side or the other and that they uh, 
calling for both parts to exercise restraint. But my point is that we are the only legitimate government of Venezuela in the United Nations. And the Secretary General should recognize that fact. And the event that happens this morning, which is that there was a reckless attempt, failed attempt, to overthrow by violence, by violence, our government uh, should call for the Secretary General to exercise his duty for calling for peace and the respect of our constitutional democratically elected government. And not to say that he's impartial or neutral or whatever other word, ambiguous word. Defense of, the defense of peace in Venezuela goes through the defense of the constitutional government, which, as you could see today, is exercising restraint for the maintenance of our peace. And then, with your question, let me ask, answer that third question, which is very important. Uh, sanctions kill. As simple as that. Sanctions are criminal. Sanctions are weapons of mass destruction. You don't see the smoke, but you see the effect. You see the deleterious effect of killing and suffering. And there are the sanctions use banks, sanction, sanctions use ships, sanctions use insurance companies, and uh, bl financial blockades. Uh, they cannot get away with it. They cannot just say that they are concerned about liberty or freedom or the children in Venezuela and then exercise a ghastly, nasty policy of calculated cruelty. They are acting like torturers. It's a collective punishment. And you cannot, even if it's new, you could see for yourself that it's not the only time that they have tried to choke, to strangle a country using this kind of measures. And we are fighting against that, and we are denouncing this criminal attempt. And uh, it's ridiculous that they try to play both uh, roles, the balls of the killer and the balls of the saviors. It's ridiculous. We have to fight that back. Let me. Amba Ambassador, uh, can you tell us why you cut our signal? Uh, we won't be able to show your comments today. CNN signal has been cut off in Venezuela. Will it, be, will it last as long as a CNN Espanol cut, which was 2017? What's the reason? How long will it go? Don't won't be have seen. no idea about that. I mean, if, if it happened, which I don't know, it should have happened few minutes ago because I, don't, I really I am not there and I have no news of that. I'm not denying, just saying that I am not aware. I cannot answer. Should, me, should, the new person. Well, yeah, okay. then, should, then, should there be a Security Council meeting and are you going to ask your Russian colleagues to call one? <laughs> Brilliant. Not just the Russians are the only ones who can call for a Security Council meeting. No, I but think, they're your close allies. Yeah, yeah, but, well, we have friends all over the place, not just the Russians. This is an important thing. This is 193 countries, and we're proud of our friends. And, uh, but the idea is that this should be a reason for a Security Council meeting, of course, and not just to beat to Venezuela bashing, which is the favorite exercise of the P3 here. P3 meaning UK, United Kingdom, France, and, and, and the US. I mean... Why, when there is a criminal attempt so clear in Venezuela to uh, sabotage and to destabilize our peace, why no one cares in the, at the Security Council? They should be calling for one. This is something important, and we are anxious to go there and to expose the criminal attempts against our country. Yes, please. ¿Tienen una idea de cuántos militares se subleo? Do you have an idea of how many uh, how many military participated? And you said that somewhere in the Brazilian embassy, where are the rest? How many military? Uh, there was uh, it was like 100 uh, members who protect the National Assembly. That's why they were close to the gentlemen who participated in the coup. But the lower ranking. I can, you can see here, and I can show you the video later. You can see this gentleman from the military saying that I was, they lied to me. My superior told me that there was a trouble in that area. All of us went there, but when we arrived, we saw what was happening, and then we left, and they were threatening us with weapons when we wanted to leave. Many of us left despite all the threats, but only 20 remain in that area who are the ones seeking asylum. There, there were 180 left and 20 are seeking asylum. That's why there was no need for repression or anything like that or for the use of lethal 
uh, weapons. Look, in 2004, I will sh share you the link of these of all these proofs. In 2004, I want you to listen to this. We have gone through this for many years. It's not something new. In 2004, our armed forces detected five kilo kilometers from Caracas, from our capital, over 150 paramilitary from Colombia who were in buses with uniforms from the Venezuelan army forces ready to carry out uh, uh, an operation against a Venezuela barrack. That was carried out on th with the consent of President Uribe of Colombia. By the way, the government of Colombia is very conscious of what happened and participated in this coup d'etat. They are uh, supporting a, a the establishment of a mercenary army against Venezuela, as I have denounced in the Security Council. What I'm trying to say is that the armed forces of Venezuela are united and and this operation, the only thing that demonstrates is that Mr. Guaido, he does not rule or governs any single place. And those people are seeking asylum in the embassy in Brazil because they, are, they have participated in the coup. Today, oh, brilliant. This is good. Uh, okay, what happened to the U.S. and our credentials? They are going for it. They are working hard. They are planning. They are campaigning. They are talking to everyone. But today's event, I don't think it would be helpful. You see? What happened today, they tried to convince everyone that that man this morning on that bridge was the president of Venezuela and we were usurpers. We were dictators, we were rogue states. But sorry to say, what it actually showed is that the uh, overwhelming majority of Venezuelans, one piece, don't recognize that puppet as anyone representative. If, if, it's, if it's a representative, it's representative, representative of the United States. And uh, I think it has weakened his uh, case here at the United Nations. Go for it. We're waiting. Everybody's working for it. They think that they can convince the world that that man is the actual president of Venezuela. He showed it himself this morning. Bajador. There's another, another question. The, you with glasses. Yes. Each one, one country. Um, you just said that um, no weapons were necessary, but uh, I hate to go back to this particular case, but... Um, would an armored car be considered a weapon and... Oh, well, defensive weapon to crowd control, of course. Uh, and then people also lo throwing Molotov cocktails, you need an armored car. Otherwise, yes. you will be burned. Come on. And then I also mean, just so you have a crowd on that. throwing Molotov in what cocktails situation? at you. Were they shooting at the crowd? I, I, yeah, that's, that's all I'm asking. But Were they like shooting in what at the situation crowd? would this be like acceptable? I mean, just... But the crowd control, let me tell you, behind those cars, armored cars, was where these kind of trucks, massive trucks, full of water with a water cannon. This is the only weapon that was used there. I can show you the pictures. The lady with the glasses there, I'm sorry to say. Uh, sorry, it's, um, Ambassador, it's Pamela Falk from CBS News. You may have been asked a variation on this, but what will the government reaction be if there are any foreign assistance, if there are any foreign troops or any kind of foreign assistance from the United States? Well, it would be an invasion, wouldn't it? I mean, of course, absolute break of international law, absolute violation of the Charter, of the United Nations Charter, absolutely a, a violation of all principles and norms of, in, of international law, and it would be ridiculous, which is the case now, that one of the permanent members of the Security Council is forcing other countries to break the law, that they are duty-bound to obey and comply. This is one of the most strange and weird situations we are in now, which is the superpower of the world is the main uh, rogue state, going around without care, destroying countries, invading countries, and threatening with the use of force. And you yourself said, let me get, give you this piece of information, check it for yourself. During the Iraq war, the American embassy in Baghdad had 5,000 staff personnel, American personnel, so war embassy in Baghdad. You know how many staff are in the American embassy in Bogota? 3,000. 
Do you think that 3,000 Americans in Bogota are working to fight, uh, to fight for water or agriculture? This is a war embassy, I'm sorry to say. These people are planning an invasion. Ask the Americans what 3,000 staff are doing in their, their embassy in Bogota. It's not 3,000 soldiers that are going to invade Venezuela. No, 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 it's not that simple. It's 3,000 planners, 3,000 intelligence officers, 3,000 trainers, 3,000 technicians, 3,000 information warfare technicians. It's a war embassy. Show me wherever in the world there are more than 3,000 Americans in one embassy. So they are planning for war. Let's take off the... Uh, blindfold and look the reality as it actually is. Uh, let me just, and one question for a new one, the new person. Yes, please. After the denounce of President Maduro about the attempt of coup d'etat in Venezuela, various organizations and president of countries as Venezuela, of Cuba, Mexico, and Bolivia have expressed their support in favor of President Maduro. Have you think about what strategies of support to carry out here at the UN? Yes, yes, we need to denounce, to make that denunciation. This is not a domestic issue. This is something of an international nature. Without the US power, without the CIA, without the intelligence apparatus, without the, the resources of the US, without the government of President Duque, this would have been impossible without the support of the government of Chile, who provide uh, protection, without the support of President Bolsonaro, who protects the soldiers, this is an international conspiration. They always talk about the theory of conspiration, and they call them paranoics, but these people, this, this is real. It is clear we need to make a denounce in, at this forum how violence and conspiration are being used. It is a war of intelligence apparatus. It is a war of banks against banks. The State Department against our Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Media against our media. It is a full-scale, non-unconventional war that is heating by the minute because they're desperate and have no other options. And the main purpose of Venezuela in our diplomacy of our foreign ministry, who, by the way, was sanctioned by this government of the U.S. criminalizing diplomacy, which is completely contrary to what, what the United Nations calls for. The main purpose of us, and I include myself, my main purpose as a life in my life is to stop the war of President Trump. We have to avoid that these criminal actions uh, end up in the destruction of a country that does not represent a threat for anyone. It is a crime in full development. And the, today was just one step in that direction. That's one of my main goals in my life is to stop the criminals against my country. One more question and then, and then I have to go. It's very simple. Will you make any request for a meeting of the Security Council? We will discuss that. It's very simple. If I... Si yo tuviera el poder, yo solicitaría, yo llamaría esa reunión. But the thing is that for requesting that meeting, you will need the votes. And you need to convince nine people to support you and to vote in favor. But the thing is, if any country proposes this, the convening of this meeting to discuss the situation in Venezuela. By the way, the, the president, the, the ambassador of Germany, the president of the council, he says that we are ready to discuss that. But they, but there was no uh, consequences as they would expect. Are they still ready now, ready now to, to, to conduct the meeting? It does not depend on me, but on those nine countries. If it was for me, tomorrow we will have that discussion.